once it was discovered how to release the huge energies that are involved when matter converts into energy. The bomb was inescapable, and indeed, every country that has tried to build an atomic bomb has succeeded on the first try. First we got the bomb, and that was good, because we love peace and motherhood. Then Russia got the bomb, but that's okay, because the balance of power is maintained that way. Who's next? France got the bomb, but don't you grieve, because they're on our side, I believe. China got the bomb, but have no fears. They can't wipe us out for at least five years. Who's next? By the early 1960s, nuclear weapons had become the first and last lines of defense. Weapons development and deployment accounted for nearly 10% of the gross national product in both the United States and the Soviet Union as the two nations stuffed their arsenals with ordnance both large and small, including a miniaturized version of the Hiroshima weapon that could be fired from a cannon. Now armed with nuclear-tipped missiles that couldn't be recalled once fired, each side had the power to completely destroy the other, though at an unconscionable price. It was an age of paranoia on both home fronts. The largest weapon the United States tested hit an unintentional 15 megatons. The Soviets quite intentionally topped it. They detonated a 60 megaton bomb this thing would have had a fireball maybe 10 miles across, a fireball, and must have destroyed hundreds and hundreds of miles of Siberia where it was tested by dropping it from a plane. I asked the Soviets why they did that, and they said, we just wanted to send a message that you could. And that's the dirty little secret of all those tests that we did in all those years. They were in part a communication system back and forth between the United States and the Soviet Union. 